Hi there, uh, my name is Rob and I make videos about health and nutrition. In this video, I'm going to explain why information about health is the most important type of information out there in the world and why this type of information needs to be prioritized ahead of all other information that exists in, in the world, basically. Well, while there are a lot of imp important subjects to know about, such as your uh, finances, car maintenance, politics, home renovation, foreign affairs, and other such subjects, uh, information about your health is the most important as your body is the only thing which you come into this world with and your health and the health problems you suffer from affect all other aspects of your life and life can become very miserable and a hellish existence without good health. So in this video I will first explain why your health is the most important value, value that you should hold and the first thing in life that you should always try and protect. And second, how your health is one of the easiest out of all of life's problems to fix and correct. I want to say, uh, first of all, that although life is fun and we do fun things in life, such as go skiing, go on vacations, play sports, watch movies, read books, uh, and watch sporting events, on the, on the whole, life is actually very serious. Uh, what do I mean by this? Um, I, just, I just mean that life can be extremely hellish if we live our lives any which way without any thought to which direction we want our lives to go in. Um, the, the evidence for this is the fact that many people commit suicide. Uh, many people end up dying of debil debilitating diseases such as cancer and heart disease. Uh, many people uh, become addicted to drugs or alcohol and, and end, up, end up screwing up their lives and their bodies. Um, many people end up broke and penniless in their old age. Uh, many people end up permanently depressed because they feel as though their life uh, hasn't worked out the way that they would like it to, and so on. So, so on the whole, uh, while most of us do try and enjoy life, we should all keep in mind that life is actually very serious. And that to get the most out of our lives, we should all take our lives very seriously. Um, if, now, if we can discipline ourselves uh, to live in certain ways that help us, and avoid uh, living in other ways that are detrimental. Uh, our, our lives can actually work out very well and we can uh, enjoy life without experiencing a lot of the, the misery and suffering that afflict uh, many people's lives, uh, including the misery and suffering that disease and illness brings with it. Um, there's no shortage of misery and suffering in the world, uh, but there are ways to minimize it once you know what you are doing. So there, there are a lot of problems uh, that we as humans face on planet Earth that we need that need fixing. Uh, but from my own personal experience, I have come to realize that the uh, the solutions to most of the world's problems already exist. Uh, meaning that most of the world's problems don't require uh, much ongoing uh, additional research or development to fix, and that the answers to the to the world's problems are already are with us already. So now, unfortunately, that information is widely dispersed in the minds of different individuals. Uh, and when these people speak, their ideas get discounted because it conflicts with other information that the general public at large already have in their heads, which unfortunately is usually just the conventional wisdom. And nine times out of ten, in my experience, conventional wisdom is all, almost always wrong. So a really, a really good example of this is world poverty. Uh, world poverty is an ongoing problem that is a, has a very uh, simple solution that experts have known how to fix for at least a century or so. Uh, the vast majority of economists agree that countries that, um, for example, put in all kinds of free market reforms, including lowering taxes, lowering regulations, and opening up their economies to free trade, and not engaging in wealth redistribu redistribution and other uh, schemes such as that, uh, result in higher and higher standards of living and a reduction in poverty. In, in every single case of a country going from rich to poor, they have done so by implementing free market reforms. So this is true without exception. Uh, there is no exception to this rule, and this is why there is a virtual unanimity of opinion by economists on this. It is as, it is as ironclad as the law of gravity. Yet country after country all over the world uh, still suffer from high levels of poverty and hunger. Uh, this can be seen most vividly on the continents of Africa and South America. Uh, so, so why is this? Why do uh, countries still uh, suffer from poverty even though we have the answer to this? The reason for this is because politicians don't listen to economists, but instead are swayed by the demands of the voting public or special interest groups or by large companies or unions that fund their campaigns. Or they get wrapped up in ideologies that are based mainly on emotional sentiment or by the allure of short-term gains to specific groups of people, all the while ignoring the larger group of people that these policies hurt. 
Politicians listening to the demands of all these different groups instead of the expert advice of economists is similar to asking some random people in the street their opinion on how to fix a problem with your car instead of a qualified mechanic, or at least someone who has experience working on cars. They listen to the general public or these special interest groups instead of listening to the empirical evidence that is absolutely crystal clear that free markets tend to bring prosperity to the, prosperity to the masses as a whole instead of just to specific groups at the expense of other groups, which is what policies that curtail the free market working unrestricted tend to do. So instead of listening to the experts, they listen to the opinions of the general public or to Hollywood celebrities or journalists or lobbyists from large companies or labor unions. Uh, and they ignore what the experts, the economists, uh, tell them, and their countries stay perpetually poor, with hunger and malnutrition being the norm in many of these countries, and material wealth being uh, perpetually out of reach. Uh, this is why, for example, the experts such as economists, policy experts, econ economic historians, and political scientists are overwhelmingly in favor of capitalism and free markets, and the general public, the general voting public, uh, Hollywood celebrities, journalists, and news anchors are for socialism, heavy regulation, and, and involvement in the economy, and high taxes. There is a heavy disconnect between the experts and the average Joe in the street. And so this very simple solution never gets implemented in the vast majority of countries. So the solution to world hunger is crystal clear, but it's just a matter of implementing it, which many countries have done, but many still haven't, and so stay poor. So with a similar token, most of the world's problems are already solved uh, and the answers are already here existing on planet Earth. And the answer to the problem of disease and illness is, is just one of these. Uh, so this problem of disease and illness is one of the most serious problems that humanity has uh, in contrast with other creatures on planet Earth. And with a similar token, the problem of disease and illness actually has a very simple solution that many people have already figured out. Uh, most people have some idea that healthy eating and proper nutrition affect health outcomes. Uh, but I, I believe personally that most people don't realize the full extent to which this is true. Uh, believing that, uh, that nutrition and diet only helps a little or just minimally instead of understanding that this is the main cause of health problems generally. And that a disease-free and illness-free li uh, life is available to anyone willing to understand and put in some effort and ex ex exercise some self-control as well in their diet and lifestyle habits. So for most of human history, the causes, the causes of disease were largely a mystery. Uh, people have tried to do all kinds of things to alleviate disease, everything from faith healing to drinking one's own urine, to shamans and medicine men, to every type of medical system available from homeopathy to rolfing to acupuncture, to, of course, the most common one available today, which is drugs and surgery, most commonly known as uh, Western medicine. So for most people that have tried all these things, they are mostly all dead ends. Uh, while some may be completely ineffective, such as homeopathy and faith healing, uh, most are basically just short-term symptom relief and are basically just band-aid solutions. Uh, our, our most common way of addressing disease and illness, which is Western medicine, is the best example of this. Uh, but other examples include Chinese medicine and herbology. So, so why do I say this about Western medicine? So think about any medical condition. Let's say asthma. Uh, what is the solution for asthma? Well, it's an inhaler. But do you ever get to the point that you uh, don't need your inhaler anymore and can simply throw it away? Uh, no. So whenever you feel an asthma attack coming on, you simply take out your inhaler and inhale until the next time uh, you get a similar attack. Uh, but you never get to a point where you can just throw your way away your inhaler completely. So, so, so this is really just a, a Band-Aid solution. Uh, it does work, uh, but only temporarily until the next asthma attack. Uh, other forms of medicine, such as Chinese medicine and herbology, uh, address disease the same way, using specific herbs or potions for specific problems, uh, like saying that a particular herb or potion uh, is good for this problem or that problem. So, so looking for specific cures to specific problems is really not a long-term solution to health issues. Uh, in reality, health issues can stem from a number of, of sources, uh, and as much of these as possible need to be addressed in order for the problem to correct itself. So now, notice in, that in all of these, you have to wait for the health problem in, to appear in the first place and then apply a remedy that targets that particular issue. There's no focus on prevention of health issues in the first place, and the remedy for each issue is a particular drug, potion, or herb, uh, meaning that it's not holistic. It doesn't focus on taking away things that are poisoning the body generally. 
or giving the body what it needs generally in order to survive and thrive. There is also no focus on finding out what's causing the problem to occur, but in, instead applying some herb, potion, ointment, or drug that it's not a lack of that causes the problem to occur in the first place. So, so Western medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, herbology, and lots of other medical systems all operate the same way, saying that this particular drug or herb is specific for this particular ailment, but not saying what hurts the body generally or helps the body generally and can manifest in health issues generally. It's not, after all, a lack of aspirin in your body that causes you to, causes you to have a headache in the first place. So when you take aspirin, the relief you feel is simply a masking of symptoms, not taking away the, the cause of the headache itself. So, so virtually all solutions given by Western medicine operate like this. In reality, drugs don't actually cure you of a disease. What they do is mask symptoms temporarily, and then the symptoms come back as soon as the drug wears off. Uh, this is true of all pharmaceutical drugs, and it's true of the potions and herbs you would get in Chinese medicine or in herbology or other such symptoms. So now, contrast this to how the human body actually works. Think about when you sprain your arm or, or even break your arm or even when you catch a cold. Uh, without doing anything specific on your part, your body will fix your sprained wrist or your broken arm. Uh, you can put a cast on it, but it's not the presence of the cast that causes it to heal. The cast only pushes the bones together and, and so, this, so that it heals better. That's all. But, but the healing is actually done by, by your body. Uh, this is true even when you catch a cold or a bacterial infection. Even without taking any medicine, your body slowly and surely pushes out the virus or the bacteria that's causing the problem and the infection slowly goes away. Uh, if this didn't happen, you would, stay, you would catch a cold and you would stay with a cold for the rest of your life, but, but this never happens. So it's really only the human body that can heal, not really any drug. Drugs can only provide temporary uh, symptom relief, uh, not, nothing more. So for true healing, you actually have to remove what's causing the illness to begin with. The human body is always pushing towards being as normal uh, and disease-free and injury-free as it possibly can. Uh, you can see this if you cut your finger and your, your cut finger slowly heals. This is your body's internal healing mechanism, mechanism that is always trying to bring your body back to a state of homeostasis, meaning that a state where it is completely free of disease and injury. Uh, I actually made a, a really good video, um, a really great video about your body's internal healing mechanism, which I, which I suggest, I highly suggest you watch. So a lot of what causes disease has been obscured and it is not always apparent to everyone Although in the modern age, there's so much information about health available that it is strange that anyone anywhere thinks that thinks in the modern age that disease is a mystery. Every day we are bombarded by information about what foods are good for us, what foods are bad for us, what lifestyle habits are detrimental, and which ones have healing potential. Uh, much of what causes people to think that disease is a mystery is the fact that Western medicine continues to this day to be the main way that people deal uh, with illness. Uh, as soon as a health issue pops up, the default way that most people deal with these issues is to run to a doctor. Once in the doctor's office, the doctor doesn't mention anything about nutrition or diet at all and starts the patient on a series of uh, standard medical interventions which only bring relief in the short term. But if the patient doesn't change his diet and lifestyle choices, these interventions have limited therapeutic value and the patient's health issues become more chronic. On top of that, pharmaceutical drugs themselves are made from petroleum-based chemicals and become an added burden that your liver has to deal with and so can cause further health, is health issues for which the patient goes to the doctor again and gets even more pharmaceutical drugs and it becomes a vicious cycle. Uh, so now, don't get me wrong, I'm not completely against the use of pharmaceutical drugs, but they should only be used sparingly as they have illness-producing effects of their own. Uh, virtually all pharmaceutical drugs come with side effects and that sometimes can be worse than the problem itself. Uh, but I do find it amazing that you can get some short-term relief from, uh, from symptoms which sometimes can be very hard to handle. Uh, for this reason, I'm not actually opposed to the use of, pharma use of pharmaceuticals or the, uh, the pharmaceutical industry. In, in fact, the fact that you can find short-term relief from sometimes unbearable symptoms is actually uh, something that uh, I find quite amazing. Uh, so pharmaceutical drugs are an amazing uh, invention, just, just not a long-term solution. I'm going to now uh, show you a video of Lauren Lockman, who runs a fasting center in Costa Rica. He mainly focuses on fasting, uh, but he also advocates a raw food diet and a complete uh, avoidance of processed and refined foods, such as white sugar and white flour, as well as avoiding alcohol, caffeine, and table salt. 
Here he is uh, explaining a little bit uh, about the, the medical profession and why there is very little emphasis on diet, diet and nutrition in the medical profession. There's nothing we can take. There's, no, there's nothing anyone can do to you to heal your body. We're self-healing organisms. Healing and cleansing are biological processes. So only the organism can, can do these things. Now, do you think, by the way, that this technology has been lost by accident? Was it an accident that this happened? No. It's not an accident. I'll share some history with you guys for anyone who doesn't know. Just, just about 100, 110 years ago, the world's first billionaire, John D. Rockefeller, began investing in what was at the time a tiny new industry, pharmaceuticals. Okay? John D. Rockefeller didn't become a billionaire by taking chances. He liked to stack the deck in his favor. Right. Okay? So what he did was he formed the American Medical Association, which you know, was the first powerful medical association in the world and which became the model for the world. They forced the closure of more than 70% of operating medical schools. They wrote the curriculum that medical schools were permitted to teach. And they began funding medical schools who taught the way they wanted them to. So they don't have to police them. They don't have to say, hey, you're not doing this the way you're supposed to. All they do is they say, we've got a million dollar grant for you. But we're a little concerned with the way you're teaching virology. If you can just change that and teach it this way instead, we'll be glad to give you this money. And if not, that's okay. There's another school that'd be happy to have the money. What do you think happens? They dictate the curriculum that's taught in medical schools and nutrition programs. They don't want nutritionists learning how to help people get healthy. How would that be for business? Do healthy people buy drugs? I've bought zero drugs in 35 years. Zero. The average person my age takes five medications every day in the United States. Okay? They don't want people like me out there. They want the average guy out there who's going to McDonald's and making other stupid choices. And they want to encourage people to make stupid choices, which is why there are now McDonald's in many U.S. hospitals. It's good for business. Good for business. Okay, this is the plan. Think about it. They're not interested in your health. Okay, medical schools, until, until the curriculums were re rewritten by the AMA 100 plus years ago, medical schools taught fasting because medicine was about helping people get healthy. Medicine has not been about helping people get healthy for more than 100 years. Medicine, doctors, honestly, what doctors do, they don't know this. They may not realize this, but doctors are the salesmen for pharmaceutical companies. That's their job. Yeah. Okay, it's all about moving drugs. And I understand you may have a condition where you feel like you need a drug, but you want to be clear, drugs don't ever make anyone healthy. They're toxic substances that suppress symptoms. That's all. I said the other day, yesterday I think, people that take hypertensive drugs don't live a day longer. They've got nicer numbers. Okay? My father died of a heart attack, it'll be 10 years ago, in about two weeks. He died of, excuse me, he died of a stroke. He'd already had five heart attacks. He was medicated for hypertension for 20 plus years. Did the medicine help him? Not really. Doesn't help anyone. Not really. Okay? So, so as you can see from the video, the medical profession is all about uh, medicine, but not really about health. Uh, if you want a quick fix, seeing a doctor and getting a medicine for temporary relief can be great, but for lasting relief from virtually all health issues, your diet and lifestyle uh, habits need to be changed.
Uh, if you have watched my previous videos, you have seen the numerous scientific experiments uh, showing the dramatic effect nutrition and lifestyle have on health. Uh, if you have seen my raw food video, you will see the experiments of Francis Pottinger, Robert McCarrison, and other research that put various uh, groups of animals through different diet regimens. And so if you have watched these previous videos of mine, there should be no doubt as to where disease and illness stems from. Uh, notice that in all these experiments, the animals that were on the completely raw food diet uh, were completely free of illness. Uh, it, it was only when humans had tampered with their food in some way that the animals came down with sicknesses, either by cooking or refining the food. Now, another, other, another great video of mine that you should watch is my video about sunlight and how the lack of sunlight uh, affects the body to such a degree uh, that a large percentage, uh, percentage of the diseases that humans uh, suffer from result from this. Uh, this is why I always stress that it's both diet and lifestyle, uh, not diet alone, that uh, as there are many other lifestyle factors in, involved as well, uh, lack of sunshine is just one of them. So this lack of sunshine problem is especially true here in North America, as no, most of North America is in a, in a non-tropical climate, uh, but it exists even in the tropical climates, as in the modern age, most people spend their entire day indoors at work or in the home. So lack of sunshine is a problem for people everywhere around the world now. Uh, you should also watch my video about processed foods as well, as the evidence showing how much, uh, how much processed foods affect your health negatively is very, very overwhelming. Uh, I don't want to go over the information in those videos here, as I have gone over them in video after video. But to anyone who has watched them, uh, the causes of disease and illness should re be really clear. Now, one of, the, one of the biggest objections that people put up when they have a particular health issue, and I suggest healthy eating and changing their lifestyle to try to cure their condition, is that they'd say that their particular condition is not caused by diet or lifestyle. Uh, if you have watched my previous videos, you will know that a poor diet and lifestyle cause practically every disease and ailment under the sun, including things not commonly thought of as coming from diet and lifestyle choices. Uh, now, there are some genetic quirks that cannot be cured by diet and lifestyle. So, for example, I have a genetic quirk called thalassemia minor, uh, which, is, which many people of Asian and Mediterranean descent have, which causes me to have less hemoglobin in my, in my blood. And I inherited that from my mom, but it's a genetic quirk that I can never get rid of through diet. Uh, however, if you have a, a genetic predisposition, for example, to eczema, to asthma, or to allergies, this just means that... Um, you're, this is the way that your body goes once it gets abused. There are very e these are very easy things to get rid of through proper nutrition and lifestyle habits. I know this because I have gotten rid of eczema and allergies this way, and it's not the genetic predisposition that causes the problem to occur, but, but the poor diet and lifestyle habits. Uh, the genetic predisposition just tells your body which way to go once it gets abused, uh, but the causes of these conditions is always your diet and your lifestyle habits. Uh, other explanations could be exposure to pesticides, contaminated, contaminated air or water, nuclear or other types of radiation, ingestion of uh, petroleum-based chemicals, and, and others. But, but I include all of these uh, in lifestyle as it's almost always something from the outside that's causing the condition that can be changed by removing yourself from exposure to these harmful substances. If you, if you watch my raw food video, uh, you may remember the part where I talked about uh, Francis Pottinger's cats in which the dietary habits of one group of cats affected future generations of cats. In other words, the cats that were put on the cooked food diet not only got health problems, but they passed these health issues down from generation to generation. And it took four generations on a fully raw food diet until the cat's health issues normalized, meaning the cat, that the cats had to be on a raw food diet for four generations until all health issues were finally eliminated. So even health issues uh, inherited from previous generations can originally stem from diet and nutrition. So while it is true that some conditions such as mental health problems resulting from a blow to the head or health problems associated with being born with Down syndrome or genetic quirks such as my thalassemia minor cannot be corrected by changing the diet and lifestyle, this is not true for the vast majority of health issues out there, including ones that most people think are not attributable to an unhealthy diet and lifestyle including uh, most very serious illnesses and virtually all terminal illnesses. Uh, if you have watched my videos, you know that Dr. Max Gerson was able to rid people of terminal illnesses up to and including cancer through diet and lifestyle alone. In fact, in 1939, a paper called the Cheshire Medical Testament that was drafted by Sir Robert McCarrison, a very well-known and famous nutritionist, and Sir Albert Howard, Albert Howard, an ex expert in the growing of crops and in agriculture, as well as an expert in chemistry and biology, and also a botanist, 
was sent to the county of Cheshire, England, uh, the medical profession and the National Farmers Union, explaining to the medical profession and the farmers union that the true cause of virtually all illness and disease is a faulty diet and faulty nutrition, and that true health cannot be restored until the diet and lifestyle factors are addressed, and that Western medicine is not an appropriate long-term solution to health issues and can only deal with health issues in the short term and, only, and can only provide band-aid solutions. Uh, I will put a link in the description at the bottom of this video about the Cheshire Medical Testament, a testament so that you can read about it if you like. Uh, so the causes of disease to anyone who has researched health thoroughly should not be a mystery. Uh, so if you have an illness of any kind, it's really just a matter of putting uh, into practice everything I talk about in my videos. You really have to make your health a priority as good health should really be the number one value in life above all, above all others. Uh, your body is the only thing you come into this world with and that you have during your whole life uh, right until the end. And you want to make sure that it's working as well and as, as normally and as disease free as possible. You definitely don't want to wait until you have an illness before you start to make changes. You want to try to avoid getting illnesses in the first place. And when you're in good health, you don't want to take your health, your good health for granted. Uh, in addition, you, you want to correct any health issues you currently have. And relying solely on Western medicine can only give you temporary relief, but it unfortunately cannot cure you permanently. You really have to realize that, uh, that yet your good health can be taken away from you at any time. If you slip into some poor dietary habits and only by returning to good dietary habits can good health be restored. So as someone who has experienced bad health, I can tell you firsthand that bad health is something you want to move away from in any way you possibly can. People go to great lengths once they have an illness to get rid of it, uh, including paying thousands of dollars to get surgeries done, uh, surgeries that could have been avoided had they taken better care of themselves. Uh, really, you really don't want to go have to go to the extreme lengths that people have to go through, such as opening up your body and taking body parts out. This is a very extreme situation and you, know, you want to avoid this as much as possible. Uh, as this is a very situ serious situation, you should take it very seriously. Uh, the good news is that all this can be avoided by just following the tips that I have outlined in my videos. Uh, another objection that people commonly tell me uh, when I t uh, try to talk to them about healthy eating to combat illness is that they don't want to live that way. The meaning that they, they want to keep eating cakes, yeah, pies, donuts, and drinking soda and alcoholic beverages, uh, and that living without these things would be a form of self-deprivation, and they don't want to deprive, deprive themselves of anything. I respond to this argument by explaining that in life, we compromise all kinds of things, uh, all kinds of short-term pleasures to achieve uh, long-term goals, and healthy eating is just one of them. Now think about how much time people spend at work all day, or how much time they spend building businesses, or going to school to get a degree or technical diploma of some kind or another. All of that time could be spent sitting at the beach or on the ski hill or on the golf course. So, so why do people spend all that time working or studying instead of doing these more pleasurable activities? Uh, because there is some long-term gain to be gotten from doing this. Why do people save and invest money instead of blowing every last dime of their paycheck in frivolous entertainment? Uh, because they know that if they do, there is a brighter future to be had. Why do people spend hours of time at the gym, grunting and groaning, doing difficult and energy consuming exercises to be more attractive to the opposite sex? So people sacrifice all kinds of short-term pleasures for long-term gains. And there is no other long-term gain more important than your health. Anyone who has ever been extremely sick uh, with any kind of de debilitating illness can attest to this. Uh, when, you re when you are very sick, you realize how quickly how important good health is and how much more important good health is compared to any other value that you can possibly hold, including money, good looks, large homes, a very large investment portfolio, athletic ability, or any other value that you can possibly think of. Uh, and it's only once you have ex experienced extreme illness do you realize this. Now, there is a lot of information about health and, out there, and it's sometimes hard to make sense of what is the right information. So how do you know what is the, the right information? Uh, well, there's a lot of information, but the easiest way to find out what is right and wrong is to see if the information matches up with what's found in nature. It needs to make sense intuitively. And the only way to do this is to see if it matches up with what the rest of nature is doing. Uh, humans out of all God's creatures live very unnaturally. And this is why we have all these health issues in the first place. So, so for example, in nature, you don't find processed foods such as, pro, uh, such as white sugar or white flour. Wild animals, for example, don't, also don't drink tea or coffee. They don't drink alcoholic beverages such as beer or wine. They also don't smoke. So, so what do wild animals do? 
They eat their food completely unprocessed and even uncooked. They also don't eat salt. There's no salt in the diets of wild animals. Uh, even though there is sodium in all green, green leafy vegetables as well as other vegetables like tomatoes and celery. So they have no problem getting enough sodium. Uh, they drink water and they eat their food completely unprocessed and uncooked. They also spend all their time outdoors, so they get plenty of sunlight as well. Uh, all of these findings can be confirmed by modern science, so it's safe to say that avoiding uh, these foods and getting plenty of sunlight is a good start, and it also matches up with what you would see in nature. In other words, what creatures in the wild do. Naturalists and those who study animals also notice that it's difficult for animals to be healthy without eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. In nature, animals tend to graze a lot. They eat the leaves of plants, so they eat berries. Uh, and it is, also, it is also confirmed by modern science that eating a lot of fresh raw fruits and vegetables is not only good for animals, but humans also. So, so generally speaking, in terms of diet, avoiding all these things, getting lots of sunshine and eating fresh fruit and vegetables would generally be enough to get rid of most health, most health issues over time. As well, remember to get plenty of sleep and exercise. Wild animals also have this naturally in the wild as well. So really, good health can only be achieved on an individual basis and cannot be achieved by ongoing research into medical technologies such as that conducted by pharmaceutical companies and biotechnology firms. Good health in the long run can only be achieved through a change in dietary habits and lifestyle changes and has to be done on an individual basis by each person, each person individually. No scientific invention can really bring you good health. More research and more medical inventions can only bring more temporary symptom relief, and that's all. All pharmaceutical companies and biotechnology firms can do is find newer and newer ways to temporarily relieve symptoms. So healthy eating and lifestyle is the only way. There is no other secret formula that you can use to bypass this. You can only achieve good health by removing all the things that cause bad health. Uh, any other way that you will try will be either be a dead end or just temporary symptom relief, which def definitely does have its merits, but it is not a long-term solution. The easiest way to solve any problem is to stop what's causing the problem in the first place. This is true not just for health, but for problems in life generally. Rather than using a drug or a surgery, which the lack of is not what's causing the problem, simply remove what's causing the problem and allow the healing power of the human body that you see when a cut finger or a sprained ankle heals go to work. This is really the only way to achieve lasting relief from virtually all health problems. Anyway. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.